What's up everyone, we have used xlookup function to do basic lookup, but have you ever wondered what else you can do with xlookup? In this video, I'm going to show you 4 cool tricks you can do with xlookup that you probably don't use on a regular basis. For the first trick, I'm going to show how you can get the last item or index from xlookup's return array when you have duplicate lookup values. We have this table here that has the columns for ID, name, department, salary, and location. And you'll notice that there are duplicate values for location and department. If we have duplicate values, we might want to return the value where the lookup value is indexed last in the lookup range instead of first. For example, we have the duplicate values for New York and we want to return the name. Normally, xlookup would only return the first instance of the duplicate value pairing, which in this case would be John Doe. But if we want to return Michael Lee instead, which is the last position that New York would appear in the lookup range, we can set the value in cell i1 we're trying to look for as New York. And in cell i2, I'm going to do equal to xlookup. The lookup value will be the value in cell i1, comma. The lookup array will be the range from cell e2 to e8, which are the location, comma. And the return array or the value we're trying to return will be the name in, from cell b2 to b8, comma. And if the value is not found or we can't find any lookup value, we can just return something like nope. Or we can just ignore it and it'll return an NA error, comma. The match mode we're going to ignore, or we can just put in zero for exact match, comma. And this is a key part where we want to return the last item from the return array instead of the first one. So we're going to enter in negative one, search last to first as the default value and close this out, press enter. And we get back Michael Lee instead which appears after John Doe. The next trick I'm going to show you guys will involve the use of wildcard characters and partial matches. Let's go to the trick number two worksheet and you'll see that we basically have the same table as before. This time we want to do a partial match for the name and return the salary for that name. And when I say partial match, I want to match a part of the text in cell H1 to the entire text in column B. So we have the full name appearing in column B, but if I only have the first name available, then we want to use xlookup's wildcard characters to return the value from that first name only. So let's say that we want to return the salary for John Doe, which is 60,000, but in cell H1, we only have his first name, which is John. Well, what we can do is that in cell H2, we can type out equals to xlookup, represents the lookup value as John, and then do an ampersand, and in quotes, put in the asterisk symbol, comma. The lookup array will be cells B2 to B8, comma, and the return array will be the salaries here, comma, if the value is not found, we can just return nope, comma, and in match mode, we're going to try to do the partial match, so for match mode, we're going to have the number two for wildcard character match, and we have the description here, searches for a wildcard match, where asterisk, comma, and a tilt symbol have special meaning. Now, the two most common wildcard characters used are the asterisk and question mark. So we won't really be going over this that much for now. So I can do a tab and then just close this out and press enter. And we get back the number for 60,000, even though we don't have the full match of John Doe here. So what if we only have the last name of Doe instead? Well, we can adjust the xlookup function or the lookup value here to include the asterisk symbol before h1 and ampersand. That way, it would look something like asterisk and then doe. So the symbol is going to try to match everything before doe. Well, the symbol will try to like find the name for doe and then like match everything before that. So press enter and we get back 60,000 again. Another way you can use wildcards is that you can also use the asterisk on both sides. So if I do asterisk ampersand the doe text and then put in an ampersand here, asterisk. It's going to try to do a partial match in all directions from left and right. If I press enter, we get 60,000 back. And if I change this to John, we still get 60,000 back. And if I do John Doe, we get 60,000 back again. So the partial match will try to match in all directions of the text. While the asterisk symbol will try to match for all characters before or after a text, the question mark symbol will try to match only one character. So let's go back to our example with John Doe. If I remove the E here, we're going to try to use the question mark symbol to fill in the blank. So I can do an equal to x lookup. The lookup value will be cell h1 and then do an ampersand and put in the quote and question mark, comma. Lookup array will be the names. Return array, the salary. And if not found, type out nope. And match mode will be two again. 
and close this out and press enter and we get back the same value of 60,000. So what if there was a typo in John where like the H is another character? Let's change this from an H to an L and we're going to put the E back again, press enter and we can adjust this function to take into account the typo. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to type out J O and where the typo is, I'm going to put the question mark in and then do an N and type out Do again, close this out and press enter. And we get back the same 60,000 again. Trick number three will use the combination of the sum function and the xlookup function. The cool thing with xlookup is that you can return multiple columns at once. So in this table, I added two extra columns for sign on bonus and annual bonus. And our main goal is to find the total compensation for the name we're looking up. Let's look up the total compensation for Emily Davis. In cell K1, I'm gonna reference the name Emily Davis for my list. And in this cell, I'm going to do equals to x lookup. The lookup value will be cell k1, comma. The lookup array will be the range from b2 to b8, same as before, comma. Now, the only different thing here is that we're going to be selecting multiple return columns. So for the return array, I'm going to select everything from cell d2 down to cell f8 to get all the salary, sign on bonus, and annual bonus information, comma. And if nothing found, I'm going to do nope. And we can just press enter and we get back these three numbers for 55,000, 1,000 and 40,000. Now, the next thing we can do is that we can enclose this function in a sum function. So I'm going to type out sum and just do a, a close parentheses, press enter. And we get back the total compensation for Emily Davis of $96,000. So let's say we're looking up a different name. We can go to this list here and we can select Sarah Brown. And the formula automatically updates to $66,500 as the total compensation. For the final trick I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to be using an array as the lookup value. So in trick number four worksheet here, I'm going to do equals to x lookup. And let's say that we want to enter an array as the lookup value. So I'm going to do an open curly brace. And then I'm going to enter the ID for 106, comma, and then 104, as these are the IDs associated with the names. And then close this out and then comma and the lookup array will be the id column here and what we want to return will be the department that each id is associated with so i'm going to reference from c2 to c8 as the return array and value not found as nope press enter and we get back an array output of sales and marketing and let's say that we want to print out this array vertically we can enclose this function with the transpose function and press enter and we get back sales and marketing, but in a column format instead. What I've shown you are four different ways that you can use the xlookup function. I hope you'll find these tricks to be useful. And if you want to see another Excel tip or trick, then check this video out where I show how you can have Excel keep leading zeros by default for any workbook that you might open up. As always, if you guys found this video to be helpful, then please like and comment down below what else you'd want to see. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.